ultimately when we get done with this, it's it's no longer just uh, do you naturally want to retrieve? It's you kind of have to. If we say fetch, that means go pick it up, not if you want to go pick it up, it would be nice. <laughs> Hi guys, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we're back for his next step. This is formal retrieving work, guys. If you are just tuning in for the first time, first of all, hit that subscribe button and then stop watching now. Go back, hit up the playlist. It's uh, You go to our channel playlist, you're gonna find formal retrieving work here with Legend and you're gonna see step one, step two, three, four, five, all the way up to where we're at. Watch them in order watch them all and watch them before you start doing this process with your dog. Now, we're gonna get him up on the table. <sighs> Again, we talk about, and I will continue to mention the importance of helping your dog get up on the table and helping them get off of the table. Um, again, one quick loop, make sure he's ready to go. Good job. Then we're gonna do a brief hold. This is the object that he did really well with last time, hold. We're gonna start walking here, hold. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. Turn, really nice, really nice. Uh, uh, uh. Again, catching, help continue condition this, good. Let's go ahead and try one more. This is gonna be that slightly more challenging for him. Hold. These are really good bumpers, very durable. Um, they teach a lot of good habits. This is DT System soft mouth trainers. They make them in small and a larger size here. This is the larger one. Come on. Just a few steps. Hold. Just a reminder here, then we're going to make the turn. Hold. Hold. Good. So that says he's very comfortable with that step. Your dog is doing a pretty good job or very close to this with maybe just an occasional attempt at dropping. Stop. Then you are ready to move on. This step here is going to be starting the fetch work. Now, we've talked about a little bit. Some dogs are gonna be hyper movers. Some dogs are gonna struggle with movement a little bit. And as this guy gets more and more comfortable, he's moving into that category almost of a hyper mover. He's excited to romp up and down the table, so we're gonna have to slow him down. This is quiet work or calm work, and we need to be able to feed that to our dogs with our own personalities. Don't be hooping and hollering and yipping and hey, every time he does something right, especially with your dogs. Um, it's gonna end up typically causing them to make a mistake that then has to be corrected in order to continue to maintain the expectation. So we use a toe hitch, and I'm gonna talk about there are a couple different ways to work through and condition fetch work. Um, one of which is a toe hitch, I'll show you how to put that on. The other of which would be an ear pinch. So we're applying pressure to their ear as that form of negative reinforcement, the mild annoyance, and then it's going to shut off when they have something in their mouth. Now, the reason that I don't really care for this one as much is you're applying pressure here, the dog's turning to say, hey, hey, what is that? And it's directly associated with you, as well as a lot of times um, yeah, you end up with the toe hitch method as it's there, you're applying pressure here and they're coming to that, which ultimately gets their head toward the table. So as opposed to their head always trying to kind of turn towards you until they learn this, what exactly that means. Now, the last of the three options would be moving straight to collar conditioning, and this would be 100% my least favorite of the three options, um, but is doable. Every dog's gonna work different, and trying something, if it doesn't work, try something different and see if your dog responds better to that, and it works better for you. We're gonna show the toe hitch method. This one gives me a little more hands-free, if you will, or a little more control over what's going on. We have a slip knot. This is paracord. I have a big loop here. See that all right? And then this will be run through here and then we have a slip. This slip should relax really easily because of this big loop. We're gonna put that up over this joint here. And then we're going to go down and around the toes. So we're going just like that. 
The way that I have that crossing here, it's gonna be pulling this way. It relaxes a lot easier so that we can get a true pressure on, pressure off situation for him. If you have it the other way, it tends to bind. So if we were pulling more from this way, it would tend to bind and then not give it quite as good a release. So now this is not some kind of magic, start pulling on a dog's toes and they're gonna start fetching stuff. We're using this like we have to teach the collar and we have to have him help him to understand what we're asking first before we can actually really start be, to apply pressure. Um, this fell down already, which is a good thing. That was from him licking. It just means that it's loose enough that we're not gonna run into any issues. So how we typically start this. I use this uh, retrieving buck that has the pad here. This one seems to work really well. I'm gonna grab a hold of the dog's lip right on this pad, and we're gonna help work this bumper into his mouth. Now the reason that we're grabbing a little bit of lip and the bumper and everything else here is it gives us control over his head. Good. And as we work through this, try and open their mouth, just a few reps, just a few reps of getting used to actually having to open his mouth himself. Here, I've got my finger. Where these teeth here, there's a, a slight gap that you can kind of push your finger into. And when you push your finger into this gap here, they open their mouth a little bit and then we can get something inside of it. All this is right now is showing them, hey, open your mouth. We're not even utilizing this toe hitch yet. So open, good. There's no cue yet because he doesn't understand what fetch means. He's not willingly or freely opening his mouth on his own, so we can't apply a cue. Good. So once he gets comfortable, it's pretty easy to get that in his mouth now. Now we're gonna start overlaying a little bit of toe pressure at the same time. The amount of pressure is just going to be enough for him to feel that it's there, and then I'm going to drop the string and completely give that to him when we get this bumper in his mouth. So I'm using my thumb down here. This kind of becomes like you wish you had three more hands, but I'm telling you just work through it a little bit and you'll get good with it. You don't have to do this forever and you and your dog will find something that works, but got this here. So this can kind of roll into his mouth and then I can use my thumb underneath here to kind of help that same feeling that I was getting with poking on this side. So it's just all, let's get that mouth open. There's very little pressure applied down here. Open up, Bubba. Good, and then that pressure shuts off. Timing is very, very important. Very important. Uh, 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 uh. Good. We can see a little bit of pushback from him. He's like, I don't really know exactly what's going on, which is why I want to take this slow. Come on. Good. We want to take this slow and not just start pushing him. He's got to understand what we're asking before we can really apply pressure. It's the exact same way that we use the e-collar. We can't start collar conditioning something that the dog doesn't understand. Okay. He's really concerned about this down here. It's different for him. He keeps trying to mess with it. So again, very light amount of pressure. Good. Nice. Let's do it again. Very light amount of pressure here. Good. Trying to work slowly and use less and less of these different triggers. Good. Up here, we're trying to use less, so I'm still holding on here, but I'm not using my thumb or this other hand to try and get him to open his mouth. Just applying a little bit of pressure here with his toes. Good. As soon as we get done there, it shuts off. Oh, ah, ah, ah. Nice. Okay, do another one. We wanna work through this in this first session. Typically, this session can be a little bit longer, but my ultimate goal is to see him open his mouth and reach for it before we end this. So this is gonna be kind of that exception to the rule. I feel that most dogs have a better understanding and go through faster if we accomplish this fetch task in one session. We don't wanna spread this one out across multiple because usually you're gonna get some pushback. And if the pushback is there, good. If the pushback is there and you end the session, a lot of times we see that there's more pushback in the next session. Uh, 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 uh. 
come a little closer this way. Good. Okay. Let's do another rep here. Applying a little bit of pressure here. Come on. Good. More pressure down here isn't the answer. Hold. We just want it to be there. Good. So we've been pretty much a constant pull thus far. I'm going to start moving into what is going to feel more like we'll be utilizing it later, and that's going to be more of a pulsing or tapping. So it'll be a light tug, 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 tug. And then as soon as he's got it in his mouth, again, drop that string so that he knows it's 100% shut off. Stop chewing on that. Stop chewing on that. Okay, so tug, 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 tug. A lot of times constant pressures, good, and this includes Iggy Collar, can cause more of a um, freezing mentality. Uh -uh. Good. And when you have a dog that's, that, you know, they're almost stuck thinking about whatever's going on, whether that's collar pressure or the toe pressure or the ear pressure, when it's constant like that, they get stuck thinking about that. And you have to use, a lot of times, either way more than what you should have to, and you push a dog into a state of being overwhelmed, it's not our goal, or, um, they just completely freeze up and they can't think about anything else that's going on. Come on. Good. Good. This is all conditioning. This is all reps showing him because the timing here is important. I'm going to go over this and then I'm going to do a few reps without talking so I can continue to build a little more momentum with him. The, the pressure here turns on. Stop. The pressure is going to turn on first, then we're gonna try and get this worked into his mouth. So tug, 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 and then I start asking by working this up into his mouth, and then as soon as it's in his mouth, it shuts off. That's gonna need to be our mild annoyance that he's learning to eventually avoid or shut off very quickly by complying. So let's see if we can get a few reps and get some progress here. Come on. Good. Come on. I'm giving to him just a little bit because I don't want to apply more pressure. And he's pulling away, which is applying more pressure on himself than I was even applying by pulling myself. I just don't want to double that. Good. So this is why it's important to have that table um, matched up to your right height. Uh, 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 stop pulling on you. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Nice job. Okay. We're trying to work this toe hitch into being a cue. Good. Good. He'll learn to respond to the toe hitch and then we'll start working into more objects. Okay. What I'm looking for, I said, was that he has kind of an understanding of the fetch. Good, that one was really easy. Nice. Before we end the session, and that's gonna involve a reach all on his own. This is why that lip's important. He's trying to pull his head away. I can kind of keep his head right where I need it. Good. Good, come on. Come on. Nah, da, 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 da. Come on. Good, tried to pull his foot away again. I gave to it just a bit, but kept that pressure coming. And then he opened his mouth. Okay, let's do another one. Good. Okay, let's do another one here. I'm doing nothing up here with my hand other than holding it there, which makes it very easy for him to grab, readily available in front of his face. Good. There's no pinching pressure here, just enough to hold on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good, good boy. Okay, move your feet just a little bit. Let's go again. There was a little bit of a grab. Good. There's no lip action there. Just had it in front of him. Keep feeding it to him in these early stages here. Come on. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. If he starts going more to an avoidance, turning his head away, we'll go backwards just a step. Come on. Ah, ah, ah. Hold. Hold. Some dogs are going to vocalize. Some dogs are you know, more theatrical in 
what is going on around them. And if you have that situation, you need to try and find a slightly different way to approach it. And then there are just some dogs that are just going to vocalize no matter what. Uh, 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 uh. That again is him applying pressure to himself, which is what I gave to a little bit, but we need to keep that pressure there. We don't want him to think that pulling away or making that little vocalization is going to get him out of this. Good. The reason that we're doing this is because we have a retriever that's not doing as good a job of retrieving as what they need to. So ultimately when we get done with this, it's, it's no longer just a, do you naturally want to retrieve? It's, you kind of have to. If we say fetch, that means go pick it up. Not, if you want to go pick it up, it would be nice. So. I went back to the lip, took a half step back because that was giving us a little more control, a little more consistency. Trying to move too fast. Come on. Good. That was very nice. Let's do another one. Good. Momentum is important, guys. Being able to do reps fairly quickly, keep them close together. Stop. Hold. Good. Keep them close together so that you can build off of what you did in the last one. Stop that. Come on. Hi, 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 hi. Right here. This chain is being a little bit of a distraction. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. Hold. Hold. Okay. Let's do another one. Still not quite ready for this. Come on. Come on, come on. Ah, 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 ah. Hold. Be aware of, good. Have enough slack here so that you can be tugging, but then we can give to him. Cause he's doing, he's like sitting there and doing a little bit of freezing. It's like, hmm, what is that? It's distracting me. And then he goes to pull his foot away and he's applying way more pressure than I am. And you have to be aware so that he's not applying too much pressure. Good. That one was really good. Good, that was really good as well. Let's get his feet moving, okay. That helps reset their brains so they don't get stuck. If you ever feel like you're just stuck, getting your dog's feet moving again can help a lot. Good. Right here again. Tugging. Ooh. Tug. He's standing on the rope. Tugging. This again is more of that frozen look. So you can see their eyes kind of just get stuck. Everything gets stuck. Move him. Come on. Nice. Let's do another one here. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. Right here. This is what we're looking at. Good. Right here. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. Here. Come on. Good boy. That's a good one. Ah. Uh. Good. Good job. Hold, hold. Okay, little movement. Do another rep here. Uh, 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 uh. Right here. In the middle, please. Hey, hey, hey. Good. Hold, hold. These are also designed to help make it easier for them to grab things in the middle and try and help train that. But some dogs are gonna fight that most of the, most of the time, uh, or most of their sessions, they're still gonna fight it. If you've got a dog that fights it, don't get too worked up about it. Do your best to continue to condition it, but I think we're pretty close here, guys. Applying just a little bit of pressure here. He's opening and reaching. I'm still kind of feeding it to him, um, in a sense of keeping it in front of him, but that, Right there, perfect, hold. It was a full reach out and grab it. Good. Hold, we're gonna take a little walk, come on. Right here, hold. Ah, 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 hold. Nice, good job, okay. That is the introductory work here to the toe hitch and starting his fetch work. You can see how we applied just a little bit of pressure, more as that mild annoyance and help condition getting that bumper in his mouth. Um, 
This is, this is very important. Pulling harder on his toes is not the magic answer, and that's not what we're doing here. We're just utilizing that as another cue to help him to understand to grab that. Now, um, all that being said, guys, that's the end of this step. That's where I want you to stop. If you can get that clean, distinct reach, you've got it. Um, we're going to give him a break now, and when we come back for his next session, we'll be coming right back into this work. We'll do a little refresher, and then we'll move right back into fetch work. And as he gets better with that single item, then we will move into multiple different items. And each one will have to be taught about the same, but we'll show you guys what that looks like. This is Legend. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We're gonna get him off the table here. Again, always backwards. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you.